But now... <sighs> Such chaos. You hear that? Waves. <sighs> Nature takes back what belongs to her. Let's hope the tunnels of this under train aren't flooded too. Hmm. Paljon mahdollista. Jos ei ole junaa, niin tulee hyvin pitkä vintimatka. Wait, I know that smell. Stay here. Hmm? Where did we find Yero's wife? Y Yero's companion. Where did we find her coffin? Please, just do me a favor and answer. Just do it. <sighs> then it really is you. What? Good question. Best you take a look for yourself. I'll wait here. <laughs> Sirius ja So, any explanations? It it must be some kind of illusion. A mirage, created by this bloody temple. Or maybe even the High Ones. Yes, of course, that, that must be it. They're trying to confuse us. By the wise hermit, they'll do just about anything, won't they? This is just... wrong. This is crazy. Ugh. Well, working with you is definitely an experience, to say the least. <laughs> we should push on. <laughs> that stupid train. <laughs> I just want to get out of this place as quickly as possible. Nehän oli sidottuna yhteen. Jos tää ei... Selviytynytkään vaan joku entiteetti otti tän, tän niinku ulkomuodon. Ja muistot. Tän mitkä muistot. Päähenkilöllä on amnesia.
Cinderella. Aina, aina osaa vetää jonkun oudon, oudon niin kuin käänteen juoneen. Mikä on ihan jees tietysti. Okei, okay, se on juna. Tää on juna-asema. Bullseye. Seems like the water spared the train. It's beautiful in a way, don't you think? I bet every arcanist would give his left hand just to get a look at it. And we're about to use it. Only thing left to do now is find out how. Seems to me that we first have to open this gate and reactivate the mechanism that powers this place. I'll take a look around. Try and find something that lets us open the gate. This is crazy. Just crazy. Kaksi vielä. Aha. Siinä oli opea miekka jopa. No?
Toi toi. Toi. Olisiko täällä vielä? Koen viimeinen ylläköyrässä. Kolme on. Noni. Outeja valaisimia. Go on inside and take a seat, okay? I'll see if I can get the train running somehow. It can't be too hard. Juna. Ta da! Yes, I'm amazing. I know that. If being a merc doesn't work out in the long run, maybe I'll ask the order to hire me as an expert on Pyrian railways. <laughs> But no guarantee this thing won't drive us right into the next abyss. Anyway, I guess even with this thing, it should be a while till we arrive. Let's make ourselves comfortable. Sorry for the drama back there at the house. I guess I just didn't know what to make of the situation. No idea. And please, save the subtle accusations, okay? <laughs> If I reacted somewhat inappropriately, I'm sorry. But hey, I'm not the one whose corpse is lying around in some old ruin. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm a little on edge right now. No offense intended. If the High Ones were planning to confuse us, they definitely succeeded. We really should tell the Grand Master about this. And about what happened to Constantine. Still, we can't allow this to get inside our heads too much. What matters right now is the mission. <laughs> And at least it stays exciting. Two daring adventurers who have gotten themselves into something they don't even remotely understand are plundering ancient ruins in search of treasure. Don't laugh, but this reminds me a little of my past. Of my childhood. <laughs> Save for the crazed mages and the mysterious bodies, of course. My sister and I, when we were young, we always used to go exploring caves near our manor. Father always gave us a good scolding when he got wind of it. 
But of course, that didn't keep us from doing it again. <sighs> right. Because I never told you. Adila and I are not exactly close these days anyway. Probably because we lost our bond somehow, after our father died. Yes, he did. Together with my siblings. Actually, Adila and I are the only surviving Delverics. All the others were murdered. Uh-huh. Well, now you know why. In a sad way, a part of me is actually glad everything happened the way it did back then. It made me into a man. And it showed me what kind of characteristics have a tendency to drastically shorten one's life. Stubbornness. My father was a judge in the tribunal, you know. He was a hard man, who at least, after our mother died while giving birth to Adila, lived for only one thing. His principles. Justice knows no compromise. That was his great creed. No matter who stood before him in court, my father treated them all the same. Damien Delveric, the epitome of justice. Yes, an extreme attitude for an extreme man. One day, the son of a highly regarded Archer Sublime stood before the twelve judges of the court. Valenzio Duran. He had murdered two whores, made them happy, as he called it, and it was obvious that he didn't feel so much as a hint of remorse. You know those kind of people. The ones who think that money and power entitle them to anything they want. Of course you can. Eleven of the twelve judges voted for a verdict of not guilty, because they knew Valenzio's father was influential within the Rolada. Only my father, of course, remained unshaken. One week later, our manor was robbed by four masked men who killed everyone. Servants, guards, my two older brothers, all of them. Officially, they were bandits, who just happened to be running around with blades made of shadow steel. My sister and I only survived because we had snuck out for one of our expeditions. Ironic, isn't it? Of course, it was the only logical consequence of my father's actions. And what good did it do in the end? None. As we speak, Valenzio's enjoying himself in some brothel, with two whores and a bowl of grapes. But you see, there's no point in being angry about this. And do you know why? Because this is just how the world works. There's no divine justice, no system through which it's decided who lives and who dies. There are decisions and there are consequences. That's it. This is also why there's absolutely no point in fighting for ideals. The <laughs> greater good, <laughs> or whatever else you want to call it. First of all, because no one will thank you for it. And second, because people are stupid. That's the one universal rule that there is to this world. No matter how much you try to accomplish something. In the end, stupid people will destroy all you've achieved with no more than a snap of their fingers. Fight for the moment. And the moment only. Because unlike everything else, you can be certain of its truth. <laughs> Do me a favor and read the Chronicles of Vin, then ask me again. Absolutely. If he had wanted to see this snob die so badly, there would have been other ways. Poison, an accident, a hired killer, just a hint of common sense. That's all he would have needed. But, of course, none of that would have conformed with his sacred principles. Adila and I were still young when all this happened. A friendly family took us in, and my sister joined the Order of the Apothecary in the Frostcliff Mountains. But since then, we haven't been able to speak to one another. She raised a wall of ice around herself, so to speak, and fled into old family books and memories. <sighs> but, anyway, enough about me. You're an orphan too, aren't you? How come? You never told me about that. You told me that the Creator's temple in Ostian had something to do with it, but what exactly happened? Yeah, I've had my share of nightmares too. 
There was this one that plagued me for years. I'd be in some kind of hall, almost like a temple. Only that there were benches and aisles, like in a courtroom. My father sat on the judge's dais, but he was a corpse. And all the spectators and the jury looked like him. Anyway, there was this grotesque trial scene where he accused me of refusing to do my duty for them. And it always ended with his skin melting off like hot wax. Indiana Jones. I know. Eventually, the dream stopped, though. Someone helped me with that. <sighs> but anyway, enough of this gloomy talk for now. We should get some rest. We've still got a long ride ahead of us. I don't say this often, but I like working with you. You're okay. You really are. Good night. Rise and shine, fair lady. We have arrived. How'd you sleep? Well, for what it's worth, neither can I. Come on, let's take a look outside. Someone has prepared a welcome for us. Enemies, watch out.
ei saatu paistia. Ei näissä ole lukenut syötävää. Näin mä. Ja siellä on jonkinlainen raunio tai linnoitus. Näkyy vanhoja sotalaitteita. Sotamaakin ei ollut hirveän, hirveän pätevä. Tomaattia löytyy.
Jesperilla oli joku parempi idea. Tonne ilmeisesti. Well, I guess that camp over there belongs to Terranor Korak. I suggest we split up. That way we'll still have a chance if they catch one of us. Here, this is your plate. I'll try going in from the east. You should go in from the west. And don't get caught or try to play the hero, all right? Considering that we're up against an entire army, that's a bad idea, even for someone with your abilities. Anywhere inside the camp. But of course an officer's tent, or maybe even Korak's, would be ideal. We'll meet again here by sunrise. Good luck, and be careful. Nipimisoperaatio mielellä. Okei, kuollut tyyppi. Tää äänien päät perustella tähän on jotain haudat. Toista. Okei, ne oli kuolleita. So here's our offer, Prophetess. Ask us whatever is on your mind, 
and we swear to answer truthfully. Or you can leave. It's up to you. <laughs> That's up to you to decide. Come on, urchin. Ask or leave. In the end, you and your people won't burn anyway. But sometimes, even the hope for deliverance alone has its merit. special that you have always been, but this is not true. You have been in the wrong place at the wrong time. And the truth is, you make our task easier. You are weak. It's just what you think it is. A weapon that allows you to bring an end to all this. Fear. Hate. Joy, you assume we are thinking in human terms, Prophetess. Yet, a true deity is more than a simple human able to throw fireballs, as your late Lightborn were. The true God is a state of being, and its existence alone forms reality according to its will. There were so many before him, and so many have found the weapon. Yet still we exist, and the cleansing is imminent. What does this tell you? <laughs> How we talk is not a choice, but a consequence. But the fact that you are too limited to understand this doesn't surprise us. They want to destroy the fleet. Hmm. Isn't it? They are doing our work for us. Yes, but they are naive. They believe that the cleansing is a good thing, and that we, the High Ones, have come to raise humanity to a higher stage. Evolution. That is what they call it. Just as the lizard became a dragon, and the bird became a man, their leader. Taranar Korak thinks he is one of the emissaries, just like you. Oh, are you so blind? We are the envoys of determination, the constant of being before which time itself bows down. The dream of one long dead, which is about to become reality, and that will lead you to your doom. Very well. Now shoot. Continue your vain search. And forgive us for the pain. Now! My lord, she is awake. Splendid. May I introduce you? To your left, there's Samael, my bodyguard, hmm, master of Ostian's arena for decades. And to your right, there's Blademaster Alma Sordan, the most gifted sword fighter of Nerim's North and commander of my troops. Furthermore, there's an entire garrison of elite soldiers outside. So, can I trust you to not do anything stupid? I want to talk to you, face to face, as civilized people do. No, not really. By the way, we have captured your friend as well. He's in a tent up in the camp, and we will compare your stories, so you'd better stick to the truth. Samael, take off the blindfold. Well then. I am Taranor, of Corex Blood, former ruler of Kabiat, and now representative of the Free Peoples of Nerim, which you undoubtedly already knew. Who are you?
I see. And who sent you? And why? Hmm, just as I suspected. And how exactly... My lord, I think you should see this. Of course. We have taken the liberty of stripping you of your belongings. If you'll excuse me for a moment, please. A silver plate. I see. They were sent to spy on us. Then let's kill them. No. She was honest, and I am a man of my word. And actually... Hmm... Actually, you have done us a favor. We can use the plates to present Aranthiel with our offer, without putting ourselves in danger. What? How? What are these plates? Old artifacts of the Pyrians. Their magic works like a sort of ear conch. Sounds are transferred from one plate to the other. And I strongly suspect that at this very moment, Taylor Aranthiel and Narathsel's traitorous heirs are gathered around the counterpart, waiting for someone to activate this plate, aren't they? Samael, do you know how to use these plates? Excellent. Then activate it. I will talk to old Aranthiel. Let's hope that he will listen for once in his life. Otherwise, this will end in disaster. Teolor Aranthiel! I know that you are there and that you can hear me, so why don't we just stop playing games? As you wish, Grand Master. You can keep quiet, but you should be aware of who's going to pay for your arrogance. Haven't you had enough war by now? After two decades? Two decades of war that were necessary because your gods suppressed the people. Or would you deny even this? Is that why you wanted to talk to me, Quarek? To throw around accusations? <sighs> no, no, that's not what I wanted. We are talking because I want to give you a chance. We know that you are fighting the High Ones, and that you're trying to reconstruct the Beacon in order to stop them. Which makes perfect sense, since the cleansing means the end of all life. Don't you agree? Ah, no, I don't. And have you even remotely understood who the High Ones actually are, and what they represent, you wouldn't either. They are evolution, the ascendance of humanity to a higher level. What? Let's just face the facts for a moment. There's no evidence that the cleansing, whatever shape it will take, will be violent. Yes, the Pyrians are gone, but how do we know they've not just simply gone to another place? That they've transformed? The High Ones are not our enemies, Aranthiel. They are the next step of evolution, the envoys of our purpose, that we might become more than the simple-minded creatures we've been during the past millennia. This is what the cleansing actually is. Don't you understand? It's the moment when humanity is relieved of its vices, united, reaching a higher level of existence. You... that's absurd. To you, it might sound that way, but I have seen it with my own eyes. Ever since the gods departed, the High Ones have sent me dreams in which I can see the future, and it's glorious. It's not our destiny to stay human, Aranthiel. With their help, we will be gods, true gods, not the idols you have worshipped. It's the truth, whether you accept it or not. By the... people are dying, Kuarik. There's war all over Veen. The dead are rising from their graves, and people are killing each other for no apparent reason. Whatever you have dreamed, does this look like some kind of ascension to you? I know about the Red Madness, but has it ever occurred to you that it follows a pattern as well? That it only befalls certain people? Whom? People whose thinking is in shackles, people whose minds are not free, and who are superstitious and ignorant. Such as the people in your country, to whom you have denied the truth about their gods. What? 
Are you saying that the red madness only affects religious people? People who still believe in the Lightborn? Yes. Religiosity is a pattern of thought that favors a rationality over reason. Someone who thinks in these patterns is simply not ready for the advancement, and the Red Madness is simply a way to sieve them out. A natural selection, if you will. That's also why you are not affected by it, Aranthiel. Because you know that what you and your order fought so hard to keep up over the years were lies. This is nonsense. There have been cases of Red Madness in the Order, too. And we have seen what the cleansing will bring us, in the dreams, and in their chronicles. And it has nothing to do with some kind of ascension. Just listen to yourself, Korik. You talk like a mad prophet. Is that what you want to be? Ah, you react just as I expected. Very well, then. Will you at least hear our offer? Speak. The cleansing has to happen, and we, the free peoples of Nerim, will make sure that it does. We will not allow your backward thinking to keep humanity from advancing, as it has done for centuries. Therefore, if you don't want a war, you will stop rebuilding the beacon, and you will tell your people the truth about their gods, so that then they, too, can ascend when the time has come. You've said it yourself, Aranthiel. This world has had enough war. Spare it yet another one. <laughs> I would if I could. But if these are your demands, then no. Then we will have to force you. This means bloodshed, Aranthiel, and innocence will die. And all because... This conversation is over. Bloody fool. Alma, prepare the attack. He asked for it. Yes, my lord. What will happen to the prisoners? The spies. Right. We're at war now, and this means you're my enemies. But as I said, I am a man of my word, and so I'll leave your fate to chance. Samael, put her to sleep, and then put her and her friend on a raft. If they survive, so be it. If not, Fair enough. Het kine. Tämä on tää alaku. here how are you doing silly still on the search is that so honestly I find that a little hard to believe but uh, I guess you know what you're doing don't you you always did come on let's go inside I prepared a little surprise or should I say a big one I suppose that depends on how you look at it <laughs> Ta -da -da -da. Look who I dug out. It's mother and little sister. Aren't they beautiful? Aren't we beautiful? Aren't we beautiful? Hmm. But I suppose what we dead people do doesn't concern you now, does it, my child? Because you are important now. Ha! Can you believe it? She's important. She is chosen. Chosen. 
chosen. But you know, I think you've forgotten something amidst all this ballyhoo of prophecies, cleansings, and beacons. That you are weak, you are pathetic, you are worthless, and you are weak. That's what you were back then. That's what you are now. And that's what you'll always be. Saving lives? You? Ridiculous! But then again, maybe we do you wrong. So why don't you just tell us? Why you? Why should you, of all people, be the solution to the problem? Why should you be able to prevent something that has happened to mankind for thousands of years? You! That's right. You don't know. Because you are a stupid, dirty brat. A murdering, stupid brat and nothing else. <sighs> See? You did it again. You made me unhappy. You made me curse. And cursing is a sin. Don't you understand? I'm only trying to help you to see. This is not you, don't you understand? You are not yourself. And deep down inside, you know it as much as I do. You know it. You know it. So, Let them call on me. tell me, silly. Why is it so hard for you to just let go? Your place is here, in the realm of the dead. So just, just let yourself fall. It only hurts in the beginning, you know? Then it's like falling asleep. Please, my child, we miss you so much. Little sister wants to play with you again. Play with you. Play with you. And the two of us, we could go hunting again, like back in the old days. Find ourselves a nice deer, and then have a good, juicy piece of meat for dinner. But do you even listen to me? Hey, you're not supposed to leave yet. You're already here. So why don't you just stay? Please, child, stay with us. 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 Stay with me. Stay with me. Hey, can you hear me? Wake up. Bad dreams? Hmm. Anyway, it's over now. And we're lucky we woke up at all. That raft Korak put us on was about as seaworthy as a paper ship. But thank the sun, that fisherwoman over there took us in. She's headed for Duneville. Uh -huh. We should arrive soon. A couple of hours. That spell Korak's mute buddy put on you must have been quite a doozy. They felt the blow to the back of the head would suffice for me. Guess I was the lucky one. Yeah. That guy should really go easier on the bottle, if you ask me. But it seems that the thousands who follow him see things differently. As if the High Ones alone weren't threat enough. Now they have a self-proclaimed messiah to back them up. That's just peachy. Well, as I heard it, he thinks the cleansing is evolution. We become higher beings. We ascend to a new level of existence, so to speak. And he thinks the reason for the Red Madness in Enderall is that people still haven't learned the truth about the death of the Lightborn. They're still superstitious, so the sickness weeds them out. Natural selection. And yeah, it sounds absurd. I guess people always see what they want to see. I'm afraid so. According to the Fisherwoman, the first of Korak's battleships have already arrived near Duneville. It'll take them a while to get the rest of their fleet over here from Narim, but still. Enderol isn't ready for this. Not at all. Most guards haven't tried their weapons on anything other than training dummies. Or at the most, bandits. In other words, we're screwed. Well, I guess first of all, we should be grateful we made it out alive. I bet that if Korak would have known your role in all this, we'd be as dead as doornails by now. Once we arrive in Duneville, we should get back to Ark as soon as possible. I'm sure Arenthiel and the others have already written us off as dead. I suggest you ask the fisherwoman how much farther it is to the village. Well, I suppose first of all, I'll go get my pay. Regardless of what transpired, we fulfilled our mission. After that, I don't know. War is an entirely different story. And ending up beaten to a pulp with a damned warhammer certainly isn't on my priority list. Maybe. The Order might be powerful here in Enderal, but compared to Nerim's army, it's a joke. And maybe... <sighs> on the other hand, if we don't manage to stop the cleansing from happening, it won't make a difference if I'm here or on Calais. 
Oh, my. What did I get myself into? I feel like a bloody marionette in a goddamn play. Nimba. <laughs> Nimba the other two. Ouch. Bad one. <laughs> can't say it isn't kind of cute, though. You know, there's one thing I just couldn't get out of my head since all this started. Does mankind deserve to be saved? I mean... Have we as a species really made this world a better place? Mm -hmm. What have we accomplished apart from bloodbaths and wars in the name of the true gods or the right way to see things? And even now that we have a common enemy, we fail spectacularly to pull together. That's pathetic somehow, isn't it? Just pathetic. <sighs> Heck, I sound like the biggest cynic alive. Let's stop here before it gets any worse. Go talk to the fisherwoman. You're really curious, aren't you? But yes, there is something that troubles me, apart from the obvious. It's my sister. Well, I told you that we haven't talked much since... You know, since the thing with our family happened. A couple of moons before we met, I wanted to change that. And I went to see her at the League of the Apothecary in the Frostcliff Mountains. But she was gone, just like that. And no one knew where she went. It's been troubling me for quite some time now. It's probably nothing, but still, I'm worried. Ah, you're awake. How are you? No offense, but you look battered. Eh, don't thank me. I only did what every other path abiding citizen would have done as well. Your friend, he told me about the Naramese. War, I... Have trouble believing it. Oh, how very reassuring to hear that. But I guess we're well off in Duneville. As long as they don't break through the cavern gate, there's no way they can get inside the town. Of course, that doesn't apply to the plantations and mines. <sighs> oh, blazes. Such chaos. Those bloody Naramis. Nothing is sacred to them anymore, is it? For millennia, there was peace between the lands of the civilized world. And now this. They're heretics, if you ask me. No more and no less. They should be hung from trees, all of them. Anyway, I guess it's best if you rest a little more. As I said, you look as though you need it. I'll wake you up when we arrive. I will do our best. I didn't think I'd ever say this, but right now I'd give a lot for the art guard to be here instead of these Doomville watchdogs. At least they know how to wage a war. <sighs> In any case, you should get back to the Sun Temple as soon as possible and show those Naramese bastards whose country this is. We will. And again, thanks for your help. Don't mention it. So, we should be back within range of the teleport runes. I'm gonna head straight back to the temple. See you there. Hi, I told you. I never got how that imbecile made it to count. Boy, you again. Did you say how are you holding up? We can do Everything all right? Ah, uh, <laughs> no, what could he say? Did you we hear don't have enough coin to fix it anyway. Captain Russia landed here just a few moons ago. Oh, really? We Where'd she come from? Twice, Twice nearly. I mean, even Say she traversed the Eridan Canal without losing Why? as much as one man. Mm. Tell me you that that was woman's good. got guts. <laughs> you have to give her that. Aye, she does. But that's about it. I talked to one of her men in the Nomad. Ah, Apparently they them got to stowaways during the passage, and she killed them both. They were refugees from the war. Then the attack to the Hard times we live in, I guess. Anyway, I'm off. Keep your chin up, girl. <laughs>